my focus uh, is on place-based making, which is a sort of form of critical making where we use uh, materials that are geologically uh, present within a sort of more immediate environment. I'm interested to see how these materials can capture a sense of place and uh, through the process of making it sort of gives us a, a sort of embodied experience of the materials. And I suppose in your case, uh, place-based making is a, is a kind of constraint that enables you to, to understand those ecological connections, but only within, within a certain limitation of the, the area that you live in. Often materials have a very long and complicated supply chains. They could come from different countries, etc. But the place space uh, really brings it to the local and it shortens the supply chain. So we can sort of have a better perception or understanding of where materials come from and follow the processes to the point that we have, um, I guess we kind of start to empathize with the material because we know exactly where things come from. Could you maybe explain um the, the sandstone works that you've been creating recently? So sandstone is another material that's, um, well, it's, a, it's, the, it's the material that defines this region of Australia. So sandstone bedrock extends from all the way from uh, Wollongong up to Newcastle. Um, and, you know, it's made from deposits of tiny particles of sand that's compressed uh, in the ocean and, you know, one particle at a time uh, over millions of years to create these sedimentary rocks. So I've been going to these areas in Piedmont, which is famous for a very high grade um, sandstone called the yellow block sandstone um, to forage sandstone from um, that's fallen on the ground from natural forces to uh, turn them into these spherical forms. Um, and then uh, creating neck pieces. Um, and the design of these pieces were inspired by uh, a Japanese Shinto um, uh, knot system that um, called Awaji Musubi, which sort of expresses a sense of care for nature and also um, symbolizes connection, strong connection between nature and humans. Instead of uh, drilling through these spheres, which I felt was kind of like a brood, too, too much of a brutal force for these uh, very ancient stones, I instead created this uh, kangaroo pouch system that gently cradled the stones um, in the way that sort of express a uh, sense of care through the design. The other material that you've been working with is also kind of it seems to be becoming a very Australian material in the sense that it's, it's one of our most contentious materials, uh, which is which is coal. Um, can you tell us a bit about your exploration with coal? Uh, yeah, coal is an interesting one. It's very politically charged. Um, I was interested in coal because there are um, several coal seams uh, within Sydney bioregion. I knew it was mine here. So, um, but it was interesting because when I went to try and find the coal locally uh, mined coal, it was next to impossible. Um, I couldn't buy it from the sort of shops or anything. Everything I could find in stores were imported from China or India. And when I tried to call the coal companies, I couldn't really get through to anybody that would sort of sell me the coal. I ended up going down to Coal Cliff down in the south of Wollongong, uh, sorry, south of Sydney near Wollongong, uh, and found lumps of coal um, along the beach because there's a coal seam that sort of, you know, comes all the way to the cliff face and onto the ocean. So uh, you can find raw chunks of coal there. I think when I use the coal within the context of contemporary jewellery as well, I mean, jewellery is a very, you know, intimate object because you wear it against your body. And I think it gives you a very different experience of the material. Um, it allows for the examination of coal from lots of different vantage points, you know, political, ecological, temporal, aesthetic. I think the coal really deserves to be kind of looked at uh, in, a, in a different light. I believe it should definitely not be burned.